Hey, what's up guys, welcome back. I told you all we'd be making a neck pretty soon, a from scratch type of thing. I've got a couple of them to do actually. Um, and one of the steps of course in that is making a fretboard. So in today's video, we're gonna cover how I got this. I made this fretboard, it's ready to insert frets, ready to glue up. Uh, you can do those in whichever order you want. I will be gluing it up first and then inserting frets after probably. But today we're gonna cover how I got to here. Okay, pretty straightforward. I did this just this afternoon. Didn't take all that long. Uh, it's a radius at 12 inches. We're gonna talk about every step that I took and what you would do if you didn't have quite the same stuff that I have. We'll just chat about that. There are lots of good tutorials out there about it. Ben from Crimson Guitars did quite a few, I think. And I'm sure there are others as well. Um, I had a little bit of different equipment than maybe some of you will. So we'll chat about how I did it and what you would do instead. And that's it. Last thing before we jump in, this one is made of walnut. It's freshly sanded to 320 right now, so it doesn't look as dark as it of course will once I've got some oil on there. I'll probably be using Odie's oil. As you know, if you've been watching my stuff, Odie's oil available through Solo Music Gear now, so check out the link in the description for that if you're interested. That helps me out if you do. And the inlay, my Angove Guitars logo, is uh, super glue from Starbon another brand that I work with. They're awesome. I think lots of people use Starbond. They're just kind of top notch. I'll put a, a link in the description to that as well. Very fast stuff. You use the super thin, but we'll, we'll show you that. And uh, black diamond pigments available in my Amazon link in the description. But you can use, of course, any anything you want for this kind of stuff as long as it's the same type of product. Certainly doesn't have to be what I use. Let's get to it. Just a quick prelude here before we jump into the action, so to speak. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I occasionally have videos that are sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has tutorial videos a lot like YouTube, but with some quality control and some very specific stuff that they specialize in. So not just anybody can make a Skillshare video, uh, and they are generally pretty high quality. In particular, I'm looking at guitar tutorials for myself because I've kind of tried to make a commitment here that I am going to learn how to play the guitar a little bit better so I can do some better demos. And the one that I'm working on right now is right here, Mike Boyd Guitar Fundamentals. Uh, pretty good. I'm going to keep working my way through it. I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to it, but yeah, hopefully I'll be able to play the guitar a little better by the time the next one rolls around. They have tons of stuff on here though, fine art, uh, video making, business and entrepreneurship, all sorts of stuff that I think a lot of you guys will find useful, including video making for those of you who have gotten into having a YouTube channel or something like that, particularly with the great guitar build off coming to a close here. I know a lot of people have used this as an opportunity to kind of start up a channel and uh, this is a good source for that kind of thing. So we're about to head back into the video and make this fretboard, but just before we do, one last thing I'll mention, the first thousand people that click the link in the description for Skillshare get a one month free membership. So you get one month to kind of try this out and see if you like it. All right, so that's Skillshare. Let's get back to fretboards. This is what I was talking about. I do have something here that a lot of you uh, presumably won't have access to, and that is a laser engraver. So I'm laser burning a few things here um, the first thing I'm laser burning in is my logo. This is going to be an inlay. I could also do this on a CNC carver, and I know actually a surprising amount of people have CNC carvers now, but I'm using the laser. I'm more familiar with it, and it makes a nice clean cut. I don't have to worry about tear out or anything, and it gets perfectly deep enough for me to be able to do an inlay. And it's going to be a powder inlay, as I'll show you. And I figured while I'm at it, I might as well also use this to mark out my fret positions. Uh, that's one where if you don't have a laser engraver, which you probably don't, uh, or an appropriately small bit for a CNC, you're going to want to do this by hand. So what you'll do is you'll mark the center of your fretboard. A lot of people have done tutorials on this. And then you'll use uh, a quality square or protractor to make your perpendicular lines. If you're looking to figure out what exactly the distances are, there's a scale length calculator on stumac.com that you can use. But I've gone ahead and used a laser engraver, which has been convenient because it also makes a, basically a little cut line there. So there's a nice little ridge for me to run my saw through when I go to do my cutting. Uh, typically what you would do is you would mark it with a pencil and then you would go in with your ruler and very carefully use a scalpel or a box cutter or something like that to make a groove there to mark it with that as well. 
and that gives the saw something to run through. I didn't need to do that because I've got this CNC laser. So there we go. Now I'm cutting out the outline of the fretboard on my bandsaw. I'm making it relatively close, but not, not quite there um, because I'm going to go ahead and sand down right to the edges. So you can cut a little bit closer if you're certain that you can get a nice straight line. I can get a pretty straight line on this, but of course the edges aren't completely perpendicular or sorry, completely parallel on a fretboard. So you can't really use a guide. Uh, so instead, I'm just cutting them out like this and then I'm going to use a sander and you'll see that I have a fairly large sander to be able to accomplish this. Another option is to use a plane, put it into a clamp and then, or vice rather, and then plane down the edges to your lines. Um, but the sander gets the job done pretty quick and a lot of people have belt sanders so it's a reasonable option probably for a lot of you. Although you may not have a belt sander quite like this one, uh, it gets through this task pretty quickly. You may be wondering why I didn't just go ahead and use the CNC machine to cut it out. Well, a CNC laser, uh, although it can engrave and cut into stuff, it doesn't cut down very far very quickly. So the shorter, the short answer is, is speed. This option is actually very quick. So the uh, cutting and the sanding is all real time. I haven't sped any of this up. And you can see how quickly it goes for me to get down to those edges, to those marked lines and end up with a really nice smooth edge. So I don't really need to sand this edge after, even though I will, of course, once it's attached to the neck, I will do my final sanding work there and my rounding and everything. And I'm gonna have to put a radius in the top of this thing, which is arguably easier once it's attached to a neck. But yeah, anyway, my point being, this process works a lot faster than me trying to cut it out on my laser. And if I were using a CNC carver, that might be a different story, but uh, I'm not. I'm doing this and it this whole thing took me probably half an hour to get from uh, the raw piece of wood at the beginning to, to this step. You can cut your board down to thickness on a decent uh, bandsaw or if you're willing to waste a little bit more material. I mean they're not all that big so you can do it on a table saw as well. This rounding part from the front was a little bit uh, disconcerting. It's fine going from the long side to the short side doing it in the other direction you have to be very careful but uh, I just go in from long side to short side afterward and smooth out those rounds very very gently and that's what I would do on my at home belt sander as well if I were doing it there pretty straightforward process and now it's basically all down to the right size I've just got a little bit more to remove on the right which I'll do kinda as I go through the finishing process here my camera's having a bit of a conniption though I'm not sure why so Hopefully I don't make anyone dizzy. Uh, the focus seems to be going a bit wacky. Doing a little cleanup here, making sure everything's nice and smooth. This is just with a razor blade, so I'm dragging a razor blade across it, uh, much like you would a scraper. Keep in mind, I'm not cutting anything, like I'm not putting the blade in first. I am dragging it, exactly like a cabinet scraper. So don't think that that means that I'm scraping like I'm shaving or something. It's uh, the exact opposite. Black Diamond Silver Pearl and some Star Bond Super Fast Thin Super Glue is what I'm going to use to create this inlay. I do this before I actually cut out the fret slots because of course I want to cut through this stuff afterward. And this process is actually very straightforward. I uh, pretend I'm in the movie Scarface or a similar drug oriented movie and I carefully distribute this white powder all over the place. Uh, yeah, this is a bit a bit weird, but anyway, uh, I use the razor blade to push this across the emblem, across the logo, so that it's you know going to get in everywhere. And then you can use any number of things, really. I wouldn't use my finger because it'd stick uh, and possibly pull some out, but I just end up using the popsicle stick um, because the razor blade wasn't doing a great job to push this stuff in. I want to get just a little bit of pressure and push this into the logo as much as I can so it's less likely to swim all over the place. This becomes a little bit like metallics, uh, metallic paints when you go in with the super glue after with the super thin stuff. That's the appropriate product. It does make it harden as much as possible. It flows in nicely but it also has a tendency to make this pigment kind of swim. So this mica powder, the pearl, will come out and move around a little bit. 
and that's why I pushed it in. Uh, it's okay if a little bit of it does that because you're still going to have plenty in the logo and it's still going to look good. And a little bit of super glue on top is going to seal it in place, which is nice. But you have to be careful. You don't want to be dumping a bunch of super glue onto uncompacted mica powder and have it go all over the place and come out of the logo and not actually end up with the colored logo that you're looking for. We didn't run into that problem at all here. I've got this star bond, like I said, this does come with an accelerator. It's non-whitening. Sometimes when you accelerate your super glue, it just turns into a white haze. Uh, you don't have that problem with star bond. So I've got the little wicking tip and I've, uh, I'm applying it carefully. I'm gonna let this harden for a couple minutes without the hardener and then I end up putting a little bit on at the end, a little bit of accelerator, but really not until it's already pretty much fully hardened. Now I'm working with a couple tools here to get the actual slotting done. These are not like the laser engraver. These are things you will actually probably need in order to get this job done. The first is the fret saw, of course, that you can see me working with there. It's made by Hosco. Uh, it's carried by Solo Music Gear, and that's where I got it. Again, if you want to help me out, if you're planning on getting one, you can use the link in the description. On the other side, I've got it marked with tape so I know how deep to cut. Uh, but the short answer is just to the bottom of the teeth. The teeth are approximately the depth of the tang on a fret. And so that's how deep I cut, and that's what I've got marked. Uh, the other thing I've got is the miter box here, and if you're comfortable with the miter box, you can do what I'm doing there and remove one of the clamps from it and just use the other and hold it in place with your hand on the far side. But you don't have to. You can do this the slow, careful way, or, uh, or you can skip the miter box altogether if you're very comfortable, although it would be a bit riskier and I don't think the speed change is probably worth it, unless you're making a ton of fretboards, in which case... Uh, you should probably opt for something for a radial arm saw instead or something like that. So anyway, this to me is a reasonable uh, kind of midpoint and it gets the job done carefully, uh, not all that quickly, but that's just fine. The miter box here, of course, is also available from Solo Music Gear. And what I've done is I've just bolted it onto a two by six along with my fret bender. Here I have a fret slot cleaner also from Hosco. Again, Solo Music Gear. And I'm being a little compulsive here. There's really no need to clean the frets at this stage, but I just want to check all my depths, make sure that they all look the same from both sides uh, and that everything is as it should be. So there's obviously some sawdust packed in there. In order to get a better look at it, I clean out all my fret slots, take a look, and uh, move on. After this, I'm going to fill them up with sawdust again because I'm going to have to put a radius in this thing. And that is a process that can be done a number of ways. Uh, there are fast ways and slow ways to put a radius in. The slower ones are, of course, the cheaper ones. Funny how that tends to work, isn't it? Um, you can see this is looking really nice at this point. I've still got that line along the edge. I'm going to sand that down. There's a little bit of remaining super glue around the logo, which is fine. I could sand that out, but I don't need to because I'm going to be putting an oil finish on this anyway. So I'm working on the slow method here. Uh, again, my camera's struggling a little bit, but that's just because I'm shaking this table so much. Uh, though this one's a lot sturdier than what I was using before. I'm using a 12-inch radius block and some 120 grit paper, so nothing crazy. It's a bit of a long process, but it gets done, and I get this thing down to 12 inches. You can also get a radius router uh, bit, which is a little bit more complicated to use. I have one. I'll be using it, but uh, not on this project. This is pretty simple. You can also uh, do a number of other things to put a radius in, including attaching your fretboard right to a blank neck and going ahead and taking it to a belt sander if you know what you're doing. It's a little bit riskier though, of course. I'm smoothing this out to 320 grit. I'm not too worried about it taking off too much material, and I'm using a Durablock sanding block, a very long one that covers the entire length of the fretboard when I do this. Uh, that kind of removes any risk of me creating higher low spots in there. So that was a pretty quick process. I just put it on a couple of those bench cookies that work actually better than I thought. The Durablock, the bench cookies, the sandpaper, they're all in the Amazon link if you're looking for them. Uh, and then I go back in with my fret slot cleaner. This thing works quite well, actually. It so that's it. We just clean out the fret slots, clean up the board, and uh, a little bit of edge rounding will happen at the end. But for now, that's all we need. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe so you can see what I end up doing with this fretboard, because that's going to be real interesting. And as always, thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.